revisit our top 100 board, which is actually a top 125 now. So we've expanded the draft board here for CPGM, and we'll continue to do so on a bi-weekly basis. And in fact, that's where I'd like to start, gentlemen. I, I want to start with our, our draft board. I want to talk about some of the movement that has transpired on the draft board. We've done, obviously, additional uh, film study, homework, uh, and this will continue to be a living, breathing organism here as the draft process gets underway. The pre-draft process, we have the senior bowl coming up in about 10 days and before to that. And then shortly thereafter, we'll be in the combine. And then, of course, we get in the pro day. So a lot of work still to be done here. But we're expanding our top 100 to a top 125. Uh, some new names break through on the board. Uh, some some names fall a bit as we've gotten you know some more film under our belt with respect to 2023. So now that we have a, a larger library of 2023 all 22 to work with you'll see some names shift and move here so let's get into it let's get into it we'll start at the very top not necessarily wholesale changes here at the top uh just just some minor changes within the top 10. We've got caleb williams moving ahead of old fashion at third overall uh still blue chippers in our eyes in terms of those first four of course the next four, led by Malik Neighbors, uh, another set of blue chippers. We got three receivers in our top seven, uh, two quarterbacks in the top eight. Then we move down to nine through 12, and this is where things have moved a little bit more. So Latu Latu, you know we're big fans of his. He's a top defender in this class as far as we're concerned. I know that's not how the consensus feels about this, but we're convinced he's the best defensive player in this class at this juncture, followed by Jerzon Newton. Jared Verse, and then Michael Penix. So previously, we had Michael Penix ranked ninth overall. Uh, we move him down a little bit. We move him down a little bit. Of course, he's coming off a, a, a challenging, less than stellar performance against Michigan in the national championship. But I don't think it's overreaction time, where some folks feel like, you know, he, he's, you know, solidly in the day two conversation, and they got four or five quarterbacks before us. No, he's still quarterback three for us. Still, he remains quarterback three for us. But uh, the, the blue chip defenders, as it relates to this particular draft class, and Latu, Newton, and Verse are ahead of him now. Drew, I wanted to talk a little bit about Michael Penix's performance. We, we talked about it last week. Wanted to get your thoughts, because you weren't on with us last week, on how the performance against Michigan in the national championship may or may not have affected your evaluation of him. Uh, it, it didn't affect it. Uh, I was, I was, I'm just going to say this up front, man. Cost me some money. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it there. But uh, no, no, he, he, it, it didn't affect me. I was surprised. I, I figured at some point, I figured at some point he might, he might not play his best in that game, but I figured at some point he would turn it around and that really didn't happen. He missed some open shots, uh, open shots, excuse me, with, with Odunze and them boys out there. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it wasn't a good performance. I know he was getting pressured a little bit more than in he's you know he's he's seen all season really, and he he didn't handle the pressure all that well. Um, I know people were were kind of waiting for him to fail, right? To to say okay, well now we can dismiss so. him. Now we can. I, I, I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. Yeah, they want to hit me with. The, I told you so. So now they can dismiss him and put him firmly into the second, if not third round for some, right? Because of the medicals and whatnot. But nah, man. It, I mean, one game. One game. And, and let me ask y'all something. Has J.J. McCarthy proven anything, no. anything at all, outside Not of really. the ball right over the middle? That that might be his best part of his game, his ability to throw it right over the middle, down the seam, and hit a tight end wide open, right? Or, 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 or I'm not going to say tight, uh, wide open, but 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 he, he can fit it in there at times. But has he proven anything to anybody? No, man. I, I really think – it's, it's more of an athleticism thing right now. That, that's how I'm looking at it right now with, with Caleb right. and Drake May. Also, after that, Jaden Daniels, he has yeah. all the athleticism in the world. And now I'm seeing J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix ahead of Michael Penix in, in a lot of guys' uh, top 100 or whatever list they have. But I think it's athleticism because Bo Nix has athleticism. McCarthy has athleticism. All these guys have uh, top-notch athleticism at the quarterback position. And, and Penix really doesn't really have that. He has uh, functional athleticism. He could slide left, right. slide right. Um, but I think the athleticism and the injury history, you know, is really hurting him. And also, you know, some people are questioning him layering passes, you know, between the linebackers and safeties. I saw it. I saw it on tape all this season. I think he does that really well. I know he has the zip and they're trying to look for that change up. But, you know, I think he could change it up also and uh, take some off his passes. So, yeah, I still have him at quarterback three. You know, I, I'm not moving off of that. But 
if someone were to say, okay, Jaden Daniels is ahead of him, I could accept that, but I'm not going to accept J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix ahead of Michael Penix right now. Absolutely not. I, and, and to that end, Jaden Daniels is actually the next ranked player here in our top 125 at 13, followed by Dallas Turner, Troy Fautano, and Talise Fuaga. Uh, you know, as it pertains to Penix, and this is kind of my last thought on Penix for this particular show, because we're going to talk about Michael Penix a ton throughout the pre-draft process. First and foremost, I, I'm not going to overreact to one game either, right? The, 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 the body of work is strong enough for him to remain at QB3 for me. Uh, certainly, certainly it may have brought Jaden Daniels and Penix a little bit closer, uh, as reflected here in our rankings, but um, I, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You understand what I'm saying? And as you mentioned, Hadley, regarding uh, the the athleticism and and the emphasis on that. Okay, if, that, if that's what if that's if that's your delineating factor, that that's fine. That's fine. I I just think the way Michael Penix plays the game is what tends to really combat the test of time at the position. Yeah. That makes longevity. sense. Right? Long, longevity. And, and of course, of course, that's a question mark because he's had a litany of issue, injuries, right? But as far as being able to play the position at a high level, right? As far as processing, uh, you know, throwing with anticipation, making all the throws, cold weather quarterback, whether he's inside a dome, whether he's outside, I don't think it would matter. There's just elements of Michael Penix that, that not all the other quarterbacks possess. And, and one of the things that is very difficult to quantify and you know, may have taken a bit of a hit in the eyes of some is is the, the mental toughness, right? The, the, the ability to overcome those injuries, right? The ability to stand in there, face a pass rush, and deliver the football. There's no question about it. He got rattled in the national championship. He did not play his best football, nor did the team around him, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he, he had to be Superman in that one for them to, to compete, and he wasn't, and, and, and everybody fell apart. I thought that first half, as I mentioned before, the coaches got – thoroughly outcoached i thought they did a better job in the second half but but the team didn't execute in the yeah. second half right and you know of course you start pressing and and you don't you, you chose a bad time to have your worst game but again yep. um it, i'm not i'm not going to dismiss the full body of work for you know a, a, a subpar performance against really great competition in, in that national championship game but certainly understand why some people are are, are less in favor of michael Penix. The thing I'll say about J.J. McCarthy, and of course we'll get to him in more detail, is I, I think because of his age, because of his age, you, you feel like I can I can get a handle on some of those tools that he may possess and develop him and, and, and develop him, right? You, you may not necessarily have to thrust him into immediate starting role. Of course, you know, there, there's some intangibles that people like there. So I, I, I get it. I get it. But I'm not convinced, to your point, right? We, we, didn't, we didn't get to see it. We didn't get to see it on a consistent all basis. All damn season, bro. Perfect. Yeah, man. All damn so, season. I, I think I think the feather in his cap is how he performed on third down. But in the same breath, right. the way Michael Penix played when faced with pressure was better than any quarterback. It didn't necessarily come to fruition in the national championship, but throughout the season, when pressured, nobody was better than Michael Penix. So, you know, it, it's it, 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 there, there's a certain level of of recency bias there there's there's confirmation bias with with people who weren't necessarily high on him in the first place but we're gonna stick to our guns we're gonna stick to our guns on, on michael Penix, as i mentioned jane daniels dallas turner and a pair of offensive tackles around out the top 16 go down a little bit further uh and, and i just want to point out terry and arnold has now moved up to cornerback one so previously we had kool-aid mckinstry and nate wiggins ahead of him it is terry and arnold now Right. Mm -hmm. And and I think this may ultimately bear out from a lot of what I have seen. You guys have shared with me. You guys have seen yourselves is that the, the scouting community in general seems to favor Terry and Arnold. They, they, they believe he is the top corner in this class. And Heather, why, why do you feel like he's the top corner in the class? Uh, I think it's his versatility, you know, not not only playing man coverage and zone coverage. But I feel that Nate Wiggins is an excellent zone cover guy that might have a little trouble, you know, deep down the field in man coverage. And then Kool-Aid McKinstry, he's an excellent man guy, but, you know, his testing and him and zone coverage might be a question mark. I think Arnold uh, possesses the best of both worlds, whether it's man, zone, inside, outside, uh, just the intensity that he plays with. Uh, I think he's going to test really well also at the combine, physical. So that's the total package. I think the total package is why, uh, you know, Arnold is going to be ahead of the cornerback one for us. And also, you know, 
like you said it earlier, that recency bias thing where he's played the best ball. You know, Kool Aid McKinsey might have played late. better ball last year, but as of late, yeah. Terry and Arnold yeah. was the best corner on the Alabama. Uh, defense. So that's why he goes ahead of Kool-Aid McKinstry and also Nate Wiggins for us. Yeah. Drew, you, you want to add anything to that? Or you no, he, he took the words right out of my mouth. He, he gives you the best of both worlds when you talk about zone and man coverage, man. Comes up, he's ready to hit. Can't play, can't play, uh, can't play cornerback if you can't tackle, right? You know, for Alabama. Yeah. And, and we know he can do that in spades. So yeah, man, he, he's, he's the guy. I, the only way he falls off if, if he gets injured or if he has a terrible combine, that's the only way I can see that happening. Yeah, I, I think his movement skills are, are, you know, a notch above the rest. You understand what I'm saying? And as Headley mentioned, the ability to play inside and outside the numbers. That that that's that to me is the is is one of the distinguishing markers of a cornerback one, a, a top flight cornerback that matches up with the opposition's best receivers. That you can travel. It doesn't matter where they line up. And of course, we've seen over the years how a team's leading receiver lines up in the slot more so than out on the boundary a lot these days, right? You, you want to move those guys around the formation, create mismatch opportunities. In this instance, you can have Terry and Arnold follow them around. So certainly understand the no, reasoning no, behind no, Arnold. No, you, you, to, you didn't say it right, one. bro. Well, you well, didn't I say, didn't say it right, it right? Bro. Nah, nah. D-Kid D -Kid over here, he, he asked, what is, what is it at? Is this right here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be interested to know who was the alpha. Well, well did you check that man's Twitter handle, bro? <laughs> Check that man Twitter handle, bro. I, I think I might have, nah, let, me, let me not pull it up. It was Tyrion Ghost Arnold, bro. Tell me he ain't no alpha in the room. Let's go, man. <laughs> CB1 uh, right as, now, as, man. as Jake mentioned, Downs was probably the alpha, the freshman. The true freshman mm. may have been oh, the yeah, actual right. alpha yes. who, who's yeah, now yeah, transferred to Ohio right. State. I, I, I told you guys before we went on the show, Ohio State better win a national championship. Boy. Right, yeah, right, they gone. Right. Yep. Yeah. yep. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Don't see you don't it. see it? Did they, nah. who did, didn't they bring over your boy over there? Yeah. Who's the quarterback? Bob? Brian, bro. Bob. And, and and who's, who's the quarterback for them? <laughs> the, the, it's, the uh, quarter, it's about the Will quarterback. Howard. Will, Howard. Will Howard transferred. Okay. Yeah. okay. Kansas State, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, you look at the roster. I mean, it, 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 it's ready to go. But as you mentioned, that, that coaching, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Well, J J JT said, to, to Ma Maluk, he went back too. Yeah, so, all, you know, a lot of kind of. Talik Williams went back. Yeah. Burke went back. Yeah, Trinity they all went back. back. Everybody went back. went back. Luka, yeah. Everybody went back. They got to win it, man. They they the favorites. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Them yeah, in Texas looking like it with all these. Now nah, Will Johnson, kids. um, Michigan, right? No, he yeah, is. He yeah. is. He is. Just just oh. thinking in terms of those prospects. Yeah. Those, okay. Those, okay. Those yeah. Prospects. Yeah. The next guy. The next guy at safety is Malachi Stark. So that's the next guy up. Is that Georgia? Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's the next guy up. That's what I thought we were gonna see. That duo Downs and, and Malachi Starks in Athens, but. Yeah, yeah, Jake. That that's that's the big. Yeah. That's the one. That's my right question there. mark. That's my. That's question the question mark. mark. Absolutely, Dave. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I yeah. I could not agree with you more. He made the correct decision. Go back to school. You know what I mean. Make this thing pop for the Canes. You, you know what I mean. That that what, was what? that was the move. That Over there the with move. your tenth year tight end, bro. Bro, <laughs> bro. <laughs> just. Bro, you need to answer the workforce, my guy. Like you're just holding up scholarships, man. Come on, bro. Come the McCormick, on. Man, McCormick. he can't catch, bro. Like he's okay in line. I'm just like, are are we serious? Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Hey, hey, D Kid, we, we got we got those guys in the wings, man. Don't even worry about it, D Kid. We got them South Florida boys, man. Relax. Don't worry about it. We got it. Can't can yeah, name a one, bro. Get out of here, bro. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Cooper DeJean, J.C. Latham, and Marius Mims, Brandon Dorless, 21 through 24. Of course, I'm going to continue to say it. We're going to continue to pound the table for Brandon Dorless. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure no one is higher on Brandon Dorless than we are. And really looking forward to seeing him in Mobile and, and, and turn some heads. You understand what I'm saying? Drew, you made you made an argument to move Cooper DeJean up a little bit. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't I know, bring I myself it. to do it. I was disappointed. I shook my head a little bit. I think about it from this perspective. Right, I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, he he is more versatile than Kool Aid Nate Wiggins. Um, Nate Wiggins in particular, I think that's who you wanted to flip flop there. Mm -hmm. I, I just ask myself, what does he do better as a corner or as a safety? You understand what I'm saying? What what does he right. do better, right? And as a corner, what does he do better than Nate Wiggins, right? They they have a similar play style, right? And from a systemic standpoint, we would want to see both those corners play predominant zone, whether it be Cover two, cover three quarters. Now, of course, zone becomes man, and I have more faith in Nate Wiggins when zone becomes man. You understand what I'm saying? But 
Cooper's a special talent, man. I, I think he's very, I mean, he's appropriately ranked here at 21. Um, I, there'll be some pushback, I'm sure, from folks regarding Latham, considering that, you know, he, he may not necessarily be the best of movers, and, and Mims doesn't necessarily have a ton of experience. He's been injured a lot, but the, the, the talent certainly is there. So um, mm-hmm. I like it. I like it 21 through 24. And then to round out the top 32, Braylon Trice, big to Vondre Sweat at 26. Cameron Kitchens, I got a video coming out on Cam. You know, it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's a beautiful thing. So I got a video coming out on safety one. I know we have Dijon listed ahead of him, but for me, Cameron Kitchens is safety one. Graham Barton, Brian Thomas, my neighbor's running mate there from LSU. Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, and Tyler Newbin, whom, you know, I spent some time, as I mentioned before, talking about – or, or actually evaluating Tyler Newbin, man. And I got to tell you, I want to make sure the audience hears this. When you talk about run fits, the, the, the guy run fits like he's a linebacker. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's always exactly where he's supposed to be. And the way he would challenge offensive linemen as part of those run fits. So it's not like he's running up there and then jumping out of the hole and creating this alley for the running back to go hit his head on the goalpost. No, he's if, – if you're not prepared, if you're not playing with the right leverage, he's, he's going to – He's going to put the lineman on his ass. You understand what I'm saying? He plays with that kind of downhill thump. And then, of course, very, very competent in the pass game. You know, it's, it's exactly where he's supposed to be, a headsy player. So, yes, I, I understand why there is a high for Tyler Newman as a, as a top safety in this class. I just don't think he has the same playmaking gene that Cameron Kitchens yes, has. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Newman, uh, yeah. Newman if, if Newman's the first safety off the board, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And, and, and that's yeah. – we're I'm kind of separating Cooper DeJean because he's a bit of a hybrid with respect to that. If, if Newbin's the first safety on the board, it, it wouldn't shock me. Not yeah, I think I think with uh Newbin is it's just he's gonna always be where he's supposed to be. Absolutely. You know, you know, you, you know Cam Kitchens, he, he might gamble sometimes a lot mm-hmm. of big plays. Newbin really doesn't do that. Uh I think Newbin, like he's an extra linebacker, you know, with the NFL now turning to two high safeties, you bring the safety down, you know, those pseudo linebackers playing the box. I think he's excellent in the run game, he's very physical. Uh, I think he's a little more physical than Cam Kitchens, and he's very instinctive, very instinctive in, in, in the pass game. He, he triggers down his really quickly. He jumps those passes. I think man-to-man coverage, a little shaky for Newbin, but I think Cam Kitchens is just better over the top, deep down the field type safety. Uh, he's at that throwback cover three safety, but, you know, the league nowadays, they, they like their two-man safeties, and they like their safeties coming in the box, being interchangeable, uh, doing everything on the football field, and you know, that's why I think maybe Newbin will go ahead of Kitchens, but that's a guy I like Kitchens over Newbin right now. Just it's just a flash, just being able to turn over the football at a high rate mm-hmm. on, on your defense. So he just offers a little more flash than Newbin, but Newbin is really, really solid, man. He's gonna be he's a real safe pick. And I, to me, he shouldn't get out the first round. Uh it's kinda like the Brian Branch thing all you know over again. Goes. You know how that goes. Yeah. But you know, the safety position they they mm-hmm. drive him down a little bit. But even, I, I don't get it, though, because safety is, like, super important for a football team, especially I agree. how the NFL is nowadays, man. I agree. We, we, we talk about being solid up the middle, right? And and that's that the safety position consists of that. We, we, we talk about the interior defensive line, second-level defenders, which are another position that, that has been devalued. Mm-hmm. You know, teams not wanting to draft linebackers early, want to go, you know, basement bargain you know, bidding for, for their linebackers and, and it and it rearing its ugly head. I'm looking at you, Philadelphia Eagles. And the Cowboys. Uh, and, the position. Mm-hmm. and the Cowboys. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. And and, and and it bites you. And the thing the thing about it though is when when I when I look at those two prospects, and there's gonna be a lot more conversation around this, right? As we're as we're ranking individual positions. I, I think what we've done is we've pigeonholed Cam Kitchens as a center fielder. We've pigeonholed him at, that way. He's so much more than that, bro. Yeah, he is. He, he, he really is so much more than that. He is. I, I think yeah. I think I think teams are going to look at two things that that might might favor Nubin. Two things. I think as you mentioned, he's exactly where he's supposed to be always. He's always where he's supposed to be and he might be a better man coverage guy in the short to intermediate area. Yeah, he is. Of the field, Agreed. Right? Then Nubin, yeah. not yeah. not as as advanced as Newman is in terms of man coverage. But when you talk about the ability to just cover ground, right, the range, range, the ability yep. to make plays coming from depth, you understand what I'm saying? Whether it be in the run game and support, whether it be in the passing game, the ability to turn defense into offense, 
Yeah. I, I, and, and even in the split safety look, even in the split, split safety look, and, I, and I'm, I've also mentioned this before, and, and I'm, I'm going to continue to harp on this. We, we know what has happened in terms of, of NFL defenses adjusting to what the offenses have done, offenses have done over the last 10 years or so, right? Too, more too high. When, when teams, offensive, start going back to putting a fullback in there, power gap scheme, right, downhill running, you understand what I'm saying? Again, we, we've seen teams get punched in the mouth with respect to that. As we see that shift turn back, the guy that you're going to want, and I'm not saying Newman isn't capable of this, he just doesn't do it as well as Cam Kitchens, is that single high guy, right? It's going to be that single high guy in order to combat more physical gap scheme downhill running rushing attacks you understand what i'm saying i i believe that shift is coming it'll never be what it was in the 70s 80s and 90s it'll never get back to that point but you look at the lions where, where, where teams are lining up under center and they're using that heavy play action and, and they're running the football and being physical at the point of attack you know everybody wants to run you know nickel two linebackers you need you're going to need to drop that safety down you're, you're going to need to drop that safety down in order to support more and more in these coming years and you know, I, I want a guy who's competent in both playing too high as well as single high. So, a lot of more conversation around that for sure. Oh, we got a little question in the in the chat right here. They they debating the top uh, twitchiest receivers in this class, uh, other than Marvin Harrison Jr. and Neighbors. Um, I think Neighbors is the most twitchy receiver in the class. Uh, some other twitchy guys. I think the chat was talking about it. I agree with a Xavier Worthy twitch. Um, Cowing Jacob Cowing from Arizona, very twitchy receiver mm -hmm. from the slot. Uh, one guy they didn't mention, I think it's really twitchy, especially for his size, is uh, Brian Thomas Jr., uh, LSU wide receiver. Once he gets the ball in his hands, he, he's twitchy at that 6'4 frame. Who you got, Drew? I got Tez Walker from North Carolina. That's who came to, came to mind for me. And Cowling came second. I thought about Leggett, but I was like, nah. He just he got that acceleration. I wouldn't necessarily say he's twitchy. Uh, he's that's, that's all explosiveness right there. I, I think Polk yeah. is pretty pretty twitchy as well. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. twitchy. Yeah, yeah, I think he has that in his game. Uh, draft day one one. I agree with you. I agree with you. It, it is absolutely a quarters league, but but I believe that there is a a reckoning coming. Yeah, I believe there's a reckoning it's, coming. So as soon as they figure it out, as soon as it's everybody cyclical. figure it out, yeah, yeah. it's cyclical. The, the league they, is cyclical. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. It's coming. Back. Absolutely, you, you're going to have to come out of that too high, and and you, especially when you got 225 pound, 230 pound linebackers. Try, trying to, you know, I, I, I talked about Tyler Newman. This is what's really impressive about him. Like I said, he, he will go up there and he will stuff the guard. He'll take on the guard and make a play on the ball carrier. You got linebackers who don't want that smoke, man. You yeah, understand what I'm crazy. saying? So you got smaller players at the second level because you're trying to defend the pass. You got your safeties 12, 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm going to line up. I'm going to put a fullback in the game. And I'm going to run it down your throat. That's what I'm going to do. And then, and then when you start to get concerned about that, that's where the play action and the shots mm -hmm. come from. So – it's coming. Yeah, it's you. coming. Especially look at look at teams now, uh, like the Forty Nine ers and the Lions. I think those are two examples where they're going to try to run the football. If you're going to play those two high safeties, we're going to run the football. We're going to pound it. They, they have great offensive lines. So if one of those teams win the Super Bowl, you know, we, we're, it's a copycat league, and, and more teams are going to say, "Hey, you know what? The Ravens, are another team that likes to run the football." So it's like, yeah. oh, we need to stop the run now. Uh, we can't worry about. You know, you got Mahomes, you got Josh Allen and those guys, but we got to stop the run. We got to get more physical. We got to get bigger linebackers. Uh, you know, a guy like Junior Colson is, is, is uh, in this draft class is a bigger linebacker. The teams might cover it on that second level because we got to stop the run, man. And I think it's going to change. Every, like, three to five years, I think it's going to be another switch, and teams yeah. are going to need to be more physical up front. You, you and, know, and uh, go ahead. Go didn't ahead, Drew. didn't yep. Dallas fan crap on us for, for drafting linebackers? Oh, they need a linebacker. They Yes, they did. Oh, they need a linebacker. So, so did so did Eagles fan. So did Eagles fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tried to tell you, but you ain't want to listen. They don't want to listen, right. man. They, they don't. They they know better. They know better. But listen, you know, it, it, it goes beyond that, right? We, we we talk about the safety alignment. We, we talk about the second level. Just think about the players that that we're considering earlier in this draft, right? Tavondre Sweat, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, a time where you needed a Gilbert Brown, you needed a Ted Washington, you needed a Vince Wilfork, you needed somebody to eat up space, to be that that immovable object up front. And teams still need that, but generally they look for that skill set later in drafts. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They don't prioritize it. You notice, you notice, you'll see it in mock drafts that that that's starting to change a little bit. 
It's starting to change. Those those types of players are moving back up the board because of what you just mentioned, Headley. It's cyclical. It's cyclical, and you have to adjust. If you yeah. don't have specific body types and, and you can't play with a particular alignment, certain teams are going to give you problems. They're going to give you fits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have the personnel to be able to do whatever it is necessary based on your opponent. Yes, yeah, especially December, January playoff time when it gets cold. Yeah. Especially those times, man. If you want to win Super Bowls, that's what you got to do. You got to be able to run the football. DK, that 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 sign that sign sealed and delivered. Wow. Okay. Breaking okay. news. Okay. You heard it here first. All Lock right. Tape. Absolutely, Jake. I, I, I listen, that, that's why that's why you, you mentioned Headley Jr. Colson. That's why I think Edrin Cooper is gonna go high, bro. Edrin Cooper looks yeah. like a throwback, but with, with today's athleticism. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Yeah. I, I want to get I, back. I think, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. No, 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 you know, separation, man, at the wide receiver position, that's the biggest uh, thing right there, being able to separate. You know, especially if teams are playing man or if they're playing zone, it doesn't matter what they're playing. Receivers need to be able to separate. You can run 4-2 all you want to, 4-3, but if you can't separate at the next level, it's going to be tough for you, man, especially with the league so wide open right now. So, yep. yeah, Tank Dell and Jaden Reed, those were two of our, our favorite receivers last year. So those are the guys that we're looking for, and, and that's why we have guys like Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, Adunze, as our top three wide receivers, because those guys can separate. Yeah, senior bowl alums there, Jaden Reed and Tank Bell. Got not the biggest players, not the biggest players, obviously, but like you said, the name of the game is separation at the NFL level. Puka. Yeah. Puka. And you know, Drew, you 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 were early on Puka. Yeah, beat right? the drum. You, yeah, you, you were you were very, very early on Puka. And and I know that there's there's gonna be concerns about how Puka fares against man coverage. I think he's gotten better throughout the season. I think yeah, that really yeah, was yeah. was difficult for him. But as he's gotten more comfortable, the, the way he eats up zone coverage, I, I I I maintain. I maintain that if Puka was able to stay healthy throughout the senior bowl practices, he would have gone earlier. But quite a few guys, you know, as as always, went later than they should have, including Puka Nakua. All right. Uh, 33 through 40, Kamari Lasseter, Troy Franklin, Rake straw, man. I, I'm I'm on board. Heavy. Up board. Yeah. I'm on board, man. That boy, he I, different. I, he different, I, man. I get, I get, I get, I get the concern regarding his frame, his his overall size, but the technique, the skill set is phenomenal, right? And and while he was he was a three star recruit, right, which is not a bad thing. Don't don't get me wrong, but a lot of what happens with this with the the star system is based on body types. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The five stars tend to be the guys who already have pro bodies. That, that's generally how that's determined, right? Rake Straw was, was recruited by Georgia, Kirby Smart, and Saban at Alabama. Mm -hmm. So so they understood. They understood the talent that he was. Of course, he, he needed to develop more physically, which is why he wasn't rated as high as some of the other players in his uh, respective class. But certainly, Rake Straw has the goods. Um, and, and the guy right right after him is a big climber in our rankings. I believe we had him at 57. He moves up to 36. Queen and Mitchell. And I, I want to spend a little time on Mitchell here. You know, the, the ball production is phenomenal. The, his ball skills are outstanding. Um, if I, I joked, if I could take the technique of Rake Straw and put it in Queen and Mitchell's body with those traits, I think that's quarterback one over Terry oh, yeah. and Arnold. I think that player, that, that amalgamation, that hybrid is cornerback one. But Mitchell is really, really intriguing, and and I think I think he's going to go in the first round as well. You know, I, I think the scouts will look at him, look at that production, that ball production, and say, yeah, yeah, that's he looks the part. He looks the part. So, Helen, what's your thoughts on Mitchell? The one, the one question mark I had before I turn it over to you was, I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. This is D Kit's guy, absolutely. Let me make sure right. I get that on wax for D Kit. Kanye Mitchell is D Kit's guy. I believe Drew is banging the, the banging the drum for him as well. I, I, I saw a lot of off man coverage, man. A lot of off man. A lot of off man. I mean, he almost turning exclusively, them hips. He almost turning exclusively, them hips. right? <laughs> and and certainly it gives you an opportunity to keep your eyes on the, the quarterback. And 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 he, you know, he does a great job at the moment of truth. Don't, I don't want to take that away from him, but 
like you said, being able to, to turn those hips, flip those hips, drive on, on the football in, in some of those, you know, close quarter type of areas. I, I just didn't see it necessarily. That doesn't mean he's not capable of it. Just didn't see it. So what, what are your thoughts on Mitchell Hadley? Uh, like you said, man, the first thing you notice is, is the off coverage. Lots of off coverage. Um, he does break on the football really well. I love his click and close ability. Very instinctive. Uh, read and react. Uh, he gets his hands on the football. Uh, like you said, uh, good ball skills. And But I think it's a little misleading, though. You know, he had five interceptions last season. Four was in the same game. Did you watch that, that game? That's true. All the that's balls true. went straight to him. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not that's like true. he made a play on the ball. Yeah, he, 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 didn't, he didn't do much. He, he, he had 20 pass breakups, break though. He did have 20 yeah. pass breakups. So, he does get, so there's a lot of ball Interceptions is, is a little yeah, misleading. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, but he's going to be one of those size speed guys, man. Mm -hmm. He's going to run into four threes. He got the size. He got everything that you need for the quarter. So a, a coach or a GM is going to be like, we could mold this guy. He could be a shutdown corner guy. Uh, I'm a Rake Straw over over Mitchell guy because of the technique. Uh, I love how fi feisty Rake Straw is. Sometimes I think Quinn Mitchell, you know, he's not he's not as bad as uh, another guy at corner that's making a lot of business decisions I saw on tape. And I think it's your guy too, Kalen Carson from Wake Forest, Drew. Is that your guy? I'm not sure if that's your guy or not. It's, but it's, it's, it's a guy I'm familiar with, but he's not Yeah, but guy. he was making a lot of business decisions. So he's not as bad as uh, – Mitchell's not as bad as uh, Kalen Carson with that. But I like I like Ray Shaw, his intensity, his attitude, the physicality. He like he's not as big as him, but the heart. You know, when you have the heart like that at the cornerback position, that uh, you know, what what's the word? Short short memory. You know, you get yeah. to the next play. Like that's that's what I'm looking for as a corner. And you know, we talk about the receiver position. What's the most important thing? Guys that can separate. Well, you want corners that could guard those guys that can separate. That has those uh, oily hips that could move with those wide receivers. So. You know, Ray Shaw, he might not be a, a primarily outside corner. I think they move him on the inside. He does really well on the inside also. So that's why I have him over Queen Young and Mitchell. But, yeah, it's hard to argue what Mitchell's going to bring with the size, the speed combination, and those ball skills. So yeah. I think Mitchell's going to go ahead of Ray Shaw, but Ray Shaw is my guy at the end of the day. I, I think, DK, your point here is that there, there's some validity to that, right, in, in terms of how he's deployed as far as – you know how how ultimately they're trying to compensate for the rest of the defenders if they're not up to snuff you understand what i'm saying but yeah it, it's hard it's hard it's very much a projection but that that's that's the, the the art of this thing right is that generally nfl teams organization scouts they're going to bet on the traits they're going to bet on on the thing they cannot teach you understand what i'm saying so certainly understand that i, I certainly understand that I, my, my last point on ray straw before we move on is watching the lsu game right and it was the game where I think neighbors. Daniel, Daniel threw for about a little over 200 yards and he rushed, he rushed for like 200 as well, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And M Missouri was in control of that game until Ray Shaw went out of the game in the second half. Now, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it was an injury. I'm not sure what took place, but he played sparingly. He played like maybe one series in the second half. And – his absence changed the game. Neighbors, <clears throat> Brian Thomas, they just started getting off. Jaden Daniels started getting – everybody started getting off. Until that time, Missouri was controlling that very explosive offense featuring my favorite receiver in the class, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, who's also squarely in the first-round conversation now. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't want to understate. I don't want to understate or overstate, you know what I'm saying, you know, one player versus the next, but – Ray Shaw is very impressive, man. And, and watching that particular game, watching the All-22, and seeing how the defense, Missouri's defense, effectively fell apart when he wasn't in the lineup, you know, it, it really solidified my feelings about him in this particular class. Uh, Henry, you got heart, cuz? You got, got heart. You got to have heart. <laughs> got to have heart. Baby boy. You, that, that baby boy. Jody? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think. That, that so might be the top. Surely. That might be the top nickel in the class. Yeah, Sarah like, still, yep. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah, that's Good a beast. guy. That's a that's a capital GUI right there. Tez Walker, Jordan Morgan, big mover here. Jackson Powers Johnson going from 53 up to 39. And Adonai Mitchell round out our top 40 here. So yeah, yeah. Powers Johnson is is uh a bully. He he he, he the physicality. I, I know there may be some concerns in terms of scheme you know as far as him being specific. limited in terms of the scheme scheme specific but i i think that physicality plays whether you, you you want him to get out in space he's more than capable of that 
or you want him to, to you know, box in a phone booth in, in more of a gap scheme. So, yeah, Power Johnson is is, is impressive. Um, my guy, Edrin Cooper, I'm, I'm just going to plant my flag. That's one of my guys here in this particular class, Edrin Cooper at 41. A little bit of a tumble here for Leonard Taylor, just seven spots. But um, just the consistency is, is the main question with respect to Leonard Taylor. We know he has a ton of talent. Kingsley, Tyler Guyton, Cooper Beebe, Chris Jenkins, Cedric Van Prant, and Michael Hall Jr. round out the top 48. Now, of these eight players here, Drew, who who, who do you like the most and why? Ooh, who do I like them? Uh, it's it's between the two tackles, mm. um, Tyler Guyton and, and Kingsley. Both will be uh, at the Senior Bowl, by the way. And and thank you, D-Kit. Thank you, D-Kit, for that PSA. Appreciate the love. Appreciate, appreciate the that. Love. Um, I, I'm probably going to go with Guyton because I think when, when it's all said and done and you look at the end of their careers, he might, be, he might end up being the, the better tackle between the two. I think he has the potential to maybe even be the better tackle in this class. Now I'm saying that's way, way, way down the line because I think he yeah. has more developing know, to do. Yeah, yeah, he has, he has a lot more developing to do. But, so but the, who, the traits are. Him. Yes, yeah, he yeah. got the traits. He got the he traits. Got yeah, so he got yeah. them. I think, I think that very conversation is why you'll see how things play out a certain way in Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft. So it's his first mock draft of the 2024 cycle. Um, we we generally on an annual basis cover at least one or two of his mock drafts, react to them. Um, so I, I think now is a good time. And of course, with Daniel Jeremiah's mocks, he's so plugged in with respect to NFL front offices, being a, a former scout in his own right. He has those relationships. So some of what he's doing is based on what he's hearing, right? As far as how NFL teams actually view certain players. It's not necessarily the picks he would make in all instances, but some of what he's actually hearing from NFL organizations as well. So something to keep in mind there. All right. We moved down to 49. Xavier Worthy, the explosiveness obviously is there. At one point, he was part of that first-round conversation, but there's been some inconsistency. Certainly the drops have been an issue. Uh, Byron Murphy, another guy that that is, is going to be one of those risers, he's actually moving up a little bit here in our overall rankings, uh, moving up from 56 to 50. Latavian Sanders, Bo Nix, Patrick Paul moves up from 61 to 53. J.J. McCarthy, Chris Braswell, and Jalen Polk moves up a couple spots as well. Hadley, you know, one, one player that I, I haven't heard a lot of, of intrigue for from you is Chris Braswell. Why, why is that? Um, to me, you know, like he's very good in the power game. He's physical. Yeah. I just didn't see it enough on tape. You know, I'm looking for him to flash more. I'm looking for him to make more plays on that defense. Uh, and I just, I just didn't see it consistently. I know teams are going to love him um, because of what he brings from a size standpoint. Uh, physical, like, you know, we talked about it earlier. We, we want to get physical up front. But as a guy bending the edge, getting to the quarterback, getting those sacks, I just don't see it really consistently with, with Braswell. Um, you know, Dallas Turner, even uh, 92 on Alabama, I saw him get after the passer quite a bit too. So that's that's what I'm kind of missing with, with Braswell's tape. I'm, I'm going to watch more. Maybe, you know, I'll warm up to him a little more. But as of right now, now give me a guy like Jonah Ellis. You know, Jonah Ellis could get uh, with his hair on fire, could bend the edge, get after the quarterback. It just Ellis doesn't have the size as Braswell, so he's going to be pushed down the board. But I, I just love Jonah Ellis more as a pass rusher than Braswell. Okay, fair enough. For, for, for me with Braswell, I thought yeah. earlier in the season, I thought you, you didn't hear his name. You didn't know. I'm not going to say you didn't know who he was, but I'm going to say you didn't know who he was. And I think towards the middle end of the season is where he started to turn it up. And I think that's maybe where you saw. So maybe if you watch – Watch some games towards the end of the season. You might see him, you know, giving you that pass rush. Or, or at the very least, what he was doing is he, is he was moving the quarterback off his spot mm -hmm. uh, or he was rushing the quarterback, trying to, you know, have them get that ball out much, much sooner than, than normal. Yeah. No, I, I tend to agree with that, right? It, it's kind of when you started your evaluation on him, might be coloring your opinion of him. But I, I understand your point, Edley. It's, no, I, saw him late, I saw him late in the season also. Um, yeah, I, I watched okay. the Michigan game, the Georgia game. Um, I just feel like he just needs more pass rushing moves. He doesn't have that repertoire mm -hmm. like a Jonah Ellis, the spin move, the hand mm -hmm. usage. He's just not there yet. You know, power, he could develop power, power. that. Yeah, he could develop it. But yeah, as of that, right that, now. That, that seems to be consistent with a lot of the Alabama prospects, yeah, though, over the yeah, years. Mm -hmm. 
over the, over the years, right? That, that 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 always seems to be, and part of it is is that you're expected to do your job. You're, you're not necessarily always turned loose as well. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that that's the case for Braswell. It could be very much that he needs to develop more pass rush moves, and we, we mentioned that with Dallas Turner entering the season, right? He, he didn't necessarily have a bag to go to in order to get after the passer, but he's he's obviously shown some improvement from that perspective, but. Certainly, it, it seems to be relatively consistent with some a few outliers. Will Anderson, for example, is a mm-hmm. bit of an outlier. You know what I mean? So I, I understand your point there. I, I want to address Matthew Matz, his his yeah. comment here, McCarthy. I, I think I think there are a lot of NFL teams. There are going to be a healthy number of NFL teams that feel exactly as you do, Matthew. I, I, I think it's going to be that. Listen, we're, we're gonna we're gonna bet on on the the physical tools. He it, and that's the thing about McCarthy. He has the physical tools. It's not as if he doesn't have them. He has mm-hmm. the physical tools. There, there's a certain moxie. There's a certain intangibles about him that that often is considered the it factor, right? That that some folks are going to buy into. That somebody's going to buy into it, especially at his age, right? You know, being coached by an NFL quarterback in Jim Harbaugh. You understand what I'm saying? If given the opportunity to to sit and learn, I think he could be successful. I I, I agree with that. Right. I, I'm just not ready to turn the keys to the franchise over to them, is my point. And again, the NFL draft is is largely a projection. You know, if you can afford to wait on your quarterback and give him an opportunity to develop because the, the track record shows that generally works out well. Right. Bet on the traits. Let them sit. Let them learn. Let them figure out how to prepare at the NFL level. Then turn them loose as you build the team around them, as you as you upgrade the roster around them. Then yeah, yeah, I, I certainly understand that from from JJ McCarthy's perspective. It makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah, I was a I was a big fan of McCarthy, you, as you guys know um, you from were. the twenty twenty two tape. Uh, I, I love his movements in the pocket. It's just something about it. It's real subtle, uh, but he can, he got a good feet in the pocket. Uh, got pretty good pocket presence, escapability. He gets to the top of his drops. He delivers those passes. Uh, strong arm. Uh, has the athleticism that we t- we spoke about earlier. So he has a lot of traits that NFL teams are gonna yeah. like. Um, the thing about him is could be inaccurate. The inaccuracy. You see that time after time again with him. The bonehead decisions. Sometimes he makes a lot of uh, bad decisions with the football, especially in the 2022 season. And this this year, the 2023 year, they hit him. He was he they hit him a lot this year in Michigan. They ran the football. We, we wanted to see what was that game? He had like eight pass attempts in that, yeah, in that one game. State. Penn State. Against Penn State. They just ran the football the entire second half. So you never get to see him be unleashed right now. And like you said, if he goes to an NFL team, He's going to have to sit for a year, but after sitting for a year, maybe two years, I think he could develop into a pretty good uh, football player. Uh, look, you know, not the same guy, but look, look what Jordan Love is doing right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. That, that's that's yeah. the most recent. Yeah. That's the most recent example of it, right? That, you know, Jordan Love. I, I, I'll be frank. I was not a fan. I knew he had the traits, right? I knew he had the traits. Got a chance to see him live in Mobile and wasn't impressed. Wasn't impressed, but. He, he had the luxury of going to a, a team that had a Hall of Fame quarterback who was still playing, you know, pretty good ball there in, in Aaron Rodgers. You understand what I'm saying? Steeped in the system. He's been in the same system his entire time. He's been in the league. And, and now you see with all that talent and the confidence, right, that grew throughout the season, you can see you see it. You see the the the, the outcome of that. You understand what I'm saying? And and of course. He's playing with a lot of young weapons, so they're going to continue to grow together. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, it, there is a path. There is absolutely a path for J.J. McCarthy to be successful. And I, I will be – I probably will be more surprised if he doesn't go in the first round, just considering that 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 the way things are trending. Like he doesn't? You understand what I'm saying? Abs- he absolutely. Well, absolutely. He's going first round. He's going first round, dude. Trend, absolutely. It doesn't change where I, I where we rank him, though, right? I'm looking yeah. at the player as of right now, and I, I mm-hmm. think he's the two guy. That's, see, that's see, how I feel. See, he, he, and, and, and I think the thing that might help him there is Harbaugh did coach him. That that to me, that may be the biggest thing that 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 gets him in the first round because like Haley said, in terms of him being inaccurate, and then you throw you throw the you throw the we never as you said, never saw him get unleashed. Hell, I don't even unleashed is too strong, bro. What's 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 a what's a tear down <laughs> for that? that. <laughs> like, like you never even saw him, you know, Throw the okay, football. Let, let's see if he can win the game for us here. Like you, yeah. you just never saw it. it okay, we, we, we're going to play Penn State, didn't see it. Go, going to play I, Iowa, didn't see it. Going to play Ohio State, didn't see it. Oh, we're going to play Washington in the, in the championship game. You, you, you just never saw it 
ever. <laughs> it, 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 how does that happen? Yeah. This you gotta go back to twenty twenty two, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, we, we go back to, we go back and to third down and, and third and long. No, you know, he, he and third he, and long. Listen, listen, he was nice. He, he was nice. So I'll give him, I'll give him the third downs, right? I'll give mm-hmm. him the third downs, and I'll give him twenty twenty two Ohio State, and I'll give him twenty twenty two, um, a TCU. Give me another game, bro. <laughs> like to, to me, the quarterback position, I, I gotta see you play. I gotta see yeah. you. I gotta see yeah. it you. Happen. You want to see the year to year progression. Yes, you and you, you just never saw yeah. it. You never saw it. It's it's crazy to me. Every it's, time you it's, thought it's this was hedging. a game, bro. It's, it's why we're hedging, bro. Reeled them back, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's just scary. The, the, it's just scary. The ranking, but, the ranking at fifty four is is clearly us hedging as it pertains right. to JJ McCarthy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's what it is. Like like you said, this past season, twenty twenty three. We never truly saw it. You understand what I'm saying? And and at times they they hit him. You know, it, it was that like I, I can appreciate a play caller saying, "Listen, they can't stop it, so we, we just gotta keep running." No, 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 I'm with right? you. I'm I all can for appreciate it, bro. that, but yeah. but as it pertains to us projecting him to the next level, it, it does make it challenging. It does make it challenging. Yeah. Uh, and, and as Matthew points out here, this is this is absolutely true, but yeah. it can be said of any quarterback. It, re- it literally can be said of any quarterback that they need to be in the right situation. They need to be given time in order to develop. And frankly, frankly, most quarterbacks don't get that opportunity. So hopefully McCarthy gets that opportunity. You understand yeah. what could I'm you, saying? Could, could, could you imagine him with the Panthers? Some, something like that. Nah, you know what I'm nah, saying? Like that's, that's, that's the mess. type of stuff I'm talking about. Nope. You know what I'm mess. saying? As long no. as he gets to sit and watch, I'm cool with somebody driving. Matter of fact, I'm okay with that. Somebody coming back up in the first round and grabbing them so they can hold right. for that fifth year. I'm okay with right. that. But That's if you're telling me like like on day one, understand. absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely maybe like not. in New Orleans, sitting behind Carr. Maybe in Minnesota, yeah. sitting behind yeah. Kirk Cousins. Something like yeah. that where you could sit behind a, a veteran quarterback for a year. Maybe two years. Maybe two years. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I, I wanted to address uh, D. Kitt's comment regarding Cooper BB. Yes, yes. He, he, he's like a bouncer. DK, he'll throw you out Yo, the club. Right, club. Yeah. This guy right here will throw you out the club. You know what I mean? I I, I think – I don't know. I guess because it's not sexy, you know, Cooper BB is not necessarily getting the love. He's, he's going to be an interior guy. So that, that kind of pigeonholes you to later in the draft. But yeah, Cooper BB is a real deal. If I told you he was getting Quentin Nelson light, bro, with, with a little bit less technique, you know what I'm saying? So, you, you good with Sign that? Can't, we can't do that, Drew. We can't do that. Bro, just, I said light, bro. I said light, man. I said light. You trying to oh, clean bro. it up, Hadley. Yeah, Hadley yeah, said, I, I cannot abide. I I he said I can't abide. I said, I, said, I said Quentin Nelson light, light. with less technique, bro. With less technique. I got you. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want to talk about the um there was a the, talking about uh the Murphy, the Murphy versus Cassie. Yeah. Uh I I, oh, I like Murphy now. Don't bro. get me wrong. I like Byron Murphy, but Cassie yeah. was different. Yeah. Cassie was a I don't I see DJ. We we're gonna talk about DJ Mock, you know, he, they yeah. mocked him in number eleven. I that's high, man. He's sub three hundred, and, and he's not collaging Kansi. I don't see yeah. that that pass rushing uh, consistency like how Kansi did it last year um, at Pittsburgh. But uh, you know, I, what, you, what you you see it, Drew? You see Murphy no, no, top no, no, pick? No, nah, 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 bro. I, I was surprised when I saw that. But but I'm it, yeah. You know, you, when you see DJ's mock, there's always like at least three guys you're like. But he's plugged in though, so he. Okay. he Hey, he's hearing I something. Can't, and I, I can't, you can't discount it. You can't discount nope, it because nope. because he he's he 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 has he, the connection. He, he called um who, who was it he called last year? Walker. Um, Walker. Not last yeah, year, but Walker. a couple years ago. He, he called, a couple he years, called ago, years ago, whatever. Yeah, he called yeah. Walker. So yeah. the first one on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, can, can Cooper BB play center? Probably, but I don't. I, I think you're doing him a disservice. I like him at the guard. Him. Yeah, I like him at the yeah. guard. Yeah. If you yeah. if you if we're talking um max potential, it's guard all day long. All right. We got Kalen King moving down from 50 to 57. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, Kalen Carson, Braylon Allen. So, Heather, you mentioned a guy making business decisions. You're, you're referring to Kalen Carson. And what would you see? Yo, he's so inconsistent. Cause you, you, see it in, you see it in flashes. I know he was injured a lot you know, on and off the field. But once he's on the field, you see greatness sometimes. You see him click and close. You see him come up and hit. You see him get physical with Keon Coleman. And then you see him, like, shy away. I call him Mr. Business Decision right now. He's making a lot of business wow. decisions. He's not getting in there. He's not hitting. Uh, sometimes he plays off coverage. He's not driving to the football. And it's just so much inconsistency in his game, man. 
I just I probably like a lot of corners. We'll see Probably. the other corners after him here, but I think I'm moving him down my board. Mm. I'll say this I like about that. Carson because because I, I recognize I, like I recognize quite a bit of of inconsistency as well as I'm watching him. Uh, injuries, I think, played a role. I, mm-hmm. I think injuries played a role in terms of some of the business decisions that he was making, and, and I think I think there was at times a lack of concentration, particularly when he was in off coverage. Right, snap to snap. You know, you know, I, I, I liken it to, it's different. It's not a, it's not an apples to apples. It's different. But think about baseball, for example, right? And and you got, you got a pitching duel. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's putting the bat on the ball. You know, it's just pitches. You know, deep. You know, deep counts. Whatever the case may be, you can get bored. You can, you can get a little, you know, disengaged at times. And I think those lapses cost him at times. So whether it was him being reacting the way he needed to or or demonstrating the physicality, the requisite physicality that he needs, um, I, I think some of that played a factor. Now, to your point, at the end of the day, you don't want that on film. That, that's never a good sign on film. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what 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 teams think of him and and throughout that, that interview process, what is gleaned here. I, I'm interested. It, it's a, yeah. a storyline I'll be kind of keeping – my eye on throughout the pre-draft process. Yeah, I just want to see more dog, you know, because I, I see it in him. He, that, I think they got to force him to be a dog. Let, let's let's not put him in off-man coverage. Let's put you right in front of the receiver, right. man-to-man press, and be a dog because you could do it. It's just yeah. I don't see it consistently, man. I need to see more dog in him. And I think the more space he has with the receiver, maybe, like you said, he gets bored. He, he just not dialed it's, in. It's, and, it's a concentration. Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. it's a concentration issue at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now of course – because that's the case. If that is the case, if it's a prevailing issue, then that limits you, right? That that limits to to the, the type of things you can do defensively, how you can scheme it up, how you can dress up your defense. So something to keep your eye on, certainly with Kalen Carson. Braylon Allen moving up a bit here. I think we had him at 77. I I, I decided unilaterally that that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't uh, appropriate. I, I think the, the hate has gone entirely too far on Braylon Allen. Um, as draft day 101 mentioned here, Peyton Wilson would be substantially higher had it not been for his injury history. So certainly something to keep an eye here. I, I want to I wanna talk about two new entries for us in our top 100, Adissa Isaac and Bo Bray. Yeah, I, and, I like and and, and and I'm going to start with Drew. I'm going to let you get yeah, into go, the same. Go Isaac, yeah, I, go, I go, Isaac Drew. Go Isaac. Oh, yeah, because I, I don't know who the hell um... – you gonna like him, Drew, because he's a missile. Like nice. he, he's he's nice. a missile. Oh, he's man. a missile. Safety oh, three gotta, for me I, right now. Safety three. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm moving I'm, him up. I really have to check him out for sure. Um, a DC Isaac. Uh, I actually didn't know his number, bro. I just or or I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know who what, what his number was. And then I pulled up the tape. I said, "Oh, it's number 20. I said, that guy's been all over the field for Penn State consistently, man. Coming off of the edge, he can drop back in the coverage. you look cute if you want to. Um, but he has an extreme high motor. I don't think he gets the love that, that he should get because you got uh, your boy on the other side, Chop Robinson, getting all the love. But um, I, I, I like him a lot. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more um, work on him, but, but I like him coming off the edge. He has good hand usage, high motor. Um, he's got some moves in, in, the, in, the, in the toolbox that he uses. Uh, and I think he can defend the run really, 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 really well. Yeah, that's what I like. I like him getting after that that, that run game. He's really impressive yeah. doing that. Uh, but Bo Braid, safety. Uh, first of all, he's six one two ten, with good size and speed. So you know he that that's that's a plus uh, in, in the scouting community. Uh, other than that, versatility. He can play all over the field, too high in the box, nickel. He's an attacking type safety, Drew. He's gonna come downhill. He's gonna hit. Uh, he makes a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage, good timing and anticipation. I think that's what I really like about him, his, his timing and his anticipation, both in the run and the pass game, because he breaks mm-hmm. on that football. He, he times up his blitzes really well. He gets to the quarterback. Uh, he's a natural hunter. That's what I call him right here, man, natural hunter. He's going to hunt. And the only thing that, that you know, a little cause of concern is over-aggressiveness. Sometimes he gets too over-aggressive. He allowed a lot of big plays this last season. Not unlike your boy uh, from Miami, Cam Kitchens. He just need more patience at times. Just, just play, play to where you need to be. Just be where you need to be. You're not Superman all the time. You can't make all the plays. Uh, play with the other 10 guys around you. But other than that, 
This guy triggers downhill. He hits. He's like another linebacker out there. You know, we talked about a safety position being that pseudo linebacker coming in the box from, from two high safety coming in the box to make a tackle because he does that really well. And like I said, right now he's safety three. I moved him ahead of guy, a guy that I really love also in Jaden Hicks. And it's because he's yeah. just more physical than Jaden Hicks at this point. Uh, I love Hicks, uh, you know, all over the field as well. But he's a little – Braid is a little more physical than Hicks, and I got him at safety three. Mr. Zebraski, he he's a – He's a better coverage version of James Williams. Not quite okay. as big, right? But but in terms of the physicality, it's similar. Like, bad intentions. This is bad intentions. Is he is he what we, we want James Williams to yes. be? Yes. Or what he yes. should have been, excuse me, yes. Miami? Right. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 with you heavily. This is a big riser in my eyes as well. And and this is a very good safety class. You know, the more I look yeah. at it, I think it's a very yep. safety class. The, the term, the term, and, and I'm, as I mentioned, I teased the Cam Kitchens video that will be coming out this weekend. Um, the term that I use for Cam, and, and it, it applies to Bo as well, is I need selective aggressiveness. <laughs> I, I, I need you to be, I need you to be a little bit more selective, a little bit more choosy. All right, it, it can't be. Calculated out here. It can't be, you know, whatever. Three a.m. at the club. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go home with whatever. You know what I'm saying? I need you to be more selective, bro. Before when the lights the turn off. System. Exactly. <laughs> when the lights turn off. You understand what I'm saying? So if you that, sober it up. Absolutely. I, I, that's what I need from, from these two guys. Because if you can channel, if you can hone their aggressiveness, whether it be in run support or in coverage, I'm telling you, man. Special. Special play, mm -hmm. playmakers. Difference makers. You know, at the third level of your defense. And, of course, they can make plays at every level of your defense. So the opposite side of the line of scrimmage, you know, in short areas, deep, you know, the, the, the total package. But it, it's the it's the selective aggressiveness that they have to make sure that they, they hone in on there. All right. So two new entries here at 61 and 62. Also a couple new entries at 65 and 66. And, and I'll, I'll go in reverse order here. And let's talk about Jaden Hicks and – Drew, you covered Darius Robinson. Yeah, Jaden Hicks. Uh, this is a guy always around the football. Uh, the tape against uh, Wisconsin, it was, it was just impressive. Set the tone early in that game. Uh, first play, swing pass to Braylon Allen. Uh, he made the play. He came from the Raptors and made the play. And that's what he does really well. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what his 40 time is going to be like, but he got the football speed. He closes really well. Um, you know, he made a late game uh, fumble on, on Braylon Allen as well but he triggers downhill really quickly uh I like I like him in the past game as well I think he could guard a tight end I think he can lock tight ends up at the next level uh could play slot receivers uh, I like his hip movement break on the football in the past game he could blitz effectively and he he plays a lot on that second level as well uh just like a uh Bo Braid but he's just not as physical I think his run fits sometimes is uh hit or miss with him he'll allow big runs he'll miss some tackles as well so I just need to become a better tackler, be more physical, and play the run fits a little bit better. But, uh, man, this guy flies around the football, and he makes plays, man. In the biggest moments, he makes big plays in big moments, man. So that's what I like about uh, Jaden Hicks, the safety for Washington State. Yeah, he's one of those underclassmen that will be at the Senior Bowl, so looking forward to watching him as well. Yeah, Darius Robinson. Uh, you know, when I look at players, when I, when I'm scouting them and watching them, I don't even go to I don't even go to look at like the, their size or anything. I just just turn it on and see what it looks like. And as I'm watching, I'm like, all right, let me let me see what see what the size looking like, right? See the production that he had the year before this year. It, it, it says on our treatises, you know, because you know, <laughs> we be lying out here in these streets. Six five two ninety six. So so let's give him six five. 286 let's 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 take off 10 sure. pounds right sure that's that's a good size bro that's and, a beast. and he and and he plays to that size mm -hmm. at the edge and he has some explosiveness i see d kit called him um uh jared versus light I, I wouldn't necessarily go there with it um i think he's a guy who definitely you can definitely play some games up front i think he has good pace and timing when you talk about playing those games up front like i said super physical uh, I think he's he's stout in the run game, uh, and he's he might be a hidden gem when it comes time when you're talking about these edge players that you might get really good value for. All right, uh, let, let me get into these comments a little bit, man. This is just I just found this this intriguing, right? So Mississippi Brasky is trying to outfit his defense. A lot of changes in Seattle 
on defensive side of the ball. I, I hear no linebackers. Here's the thing. Your boy is – Jane Williams is suspected to, to play a linebacker at Mobile. Yes. I think yeah, that's, teams that's view doing. him as a linebacker more so than a safety. I, I You know, the physicality absolutely is there. If you want to draw some parallels at Camp Chancellor, that's okay. That's okay. You know, bigger safeties, big, big tall safeties that, that – you know, bring hats to the party. Absolutely. I, I think Bam Bam is, is a different animal. I'll be honest with you. I think Bam Bam is, is different. Um, yeah. and, and my concern with James Williams is angles. I, I think he takes some really poor angles. And, and because he's trying to kind of deliver the big blow, he doesn't wrap up all the time. So, so he can miss some tackles. Do um, you think linebacker fixes the angles playing from the linebacker position? I, I, I think so. I think so. I think so. I think it allows him to play downhill a little bit more, a little bit more sideline to sideline as opposed to trying to come from depth. That's part of the reason why Miami played Cam as a single high more frequently to allow James to play a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage in the, in the short to intermediate parts of the field. Uh, I really like what he did in 2023 compared to 2022. I think he was hurt. I didn't like the film in 2022. 2023 was much, much better. Um, it, it's going to depend on how you deploy him. But uh, and speaking to the the the, the Comparison to Cam Chancellor, I actually think Cam was more physical. Believe it or not, Cam Chancellor was more physical, bro. Bam Bam was, was a different animal, different animal. I think Williams is probably a superior athlete overall, though. Yeah. All right. What we got here? Let me catch up a little bit. Mm, Powers Johnson, scary. Yes, yes, Matthew. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Edrin Cooper. Been so for a couple of years now. All right, let's move on. Let's let's move on. Uh, Malachi Corley at 69. Jonah Ellis moves up a couple spots to 70. Uh, Josh Newton was a big tumbler for us. All right, I think we had him at 39, maybe 40 previously. Moving Bad down to 23. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's the tale of two seasons for, for Josh Newton. 2022 right. tape was phenomenal. 2023, not so much. Not so much. And, and, and Joey... Joey and DK put us up on the on the uh, the Texas tape. Texas tape. Yeah, that, one was that one was rough. That that one was rough. I I don't even. I'm not sure what he was doing in that game. Right. Yeah, some of the decisions, some of the angles, uh, the footwork looked sloppy in that one. It, it just it just was bad all around. So uh, again again, I, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater completely, remove him from the draft board. But he takes a, a significant step down. I still think he has the tools that you want and to to be a successful corner at the next level, but. Certainly some things to clean up based on the 2023 tape for sure. So so significant fall there. Zach Zinter also moves up a handful of spots in 72. He'd be higher. He'd be closer to Cooper BB uh, had it not been for the injury, I would imagine. Uh, I, I would yeah. imagine that. All right. Let's take us to our next eight prospects here. Javon Bullard, Chris Evans, Drain, TJ Tampa, uh, the big tackle from Yale. Cole Bishop moves down a bit. Lad McConkey, Junior Colson. New addition here. And then, of course, DK's guy, Max Melton, at 80. Junior Colson is a new addition here to the top 100. And, and, you know, we had the conversation about teams skewing back towards bigger defenders, larger frames at the second level to combat some of what these offenses are doing. You understand what I'm saying? As far as moving away from outside zone, um, actually implementing a lead blocker, more belly, wham, gap principles, you know what I'm saying? Get downhill in a hurry. You, you need guys who can take on a center or a guard as opposed to just getting splattered, you know, chalk outline on the on the turf. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, seriously, seriously, I, the, the amount of guys that just get buried these days, it's, it's incredible. And there's so many linebackers, second-level defenders, that simply do not know how to take on a lead block, don't know how to shed – you know, stack and shed. You, you haven't understand done it at all in their football career because of how it's yes. set up now. Right? Yes. That, that, that's the reason why I think the likes of Virginia Colson and Edrin Cooper are going to hear their names sooner than I think a lot of people have expected. Um, yeah, Cole, Cole Bishop's look, looked a little bit more stiff this season. I, I still like his ability to be where he's supposed to be. Generally, he is, but yeah, he, he showed some a little bit more stiffness than you'd like. So that's why he slides a little bit for us here in the top 100. I'm I'm still a fan, though. I'm still a fan. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not off Cole Bishop, man. I'm not off Cole Bishop. All right. Um, who else? Favorite we got? son. Yeah, let's let, let. Before we move on, before we move on, I already know what you're gonna I'm, say, bro. 
I moved your guy, Lad McConkey, down. Your, your I, guy, I, bro. I, I, yeah, I like that. I moved least guy down. I think yeah, I like he's a that. good player. I think he's a good player. I just there's a lot more players that I like more than him. That, that's really what it came down to, for me. I, I think he's solid. I, I, I definitely think he's solid. But had to move him down here in the top 100. Uh, and then we get to 81 through 88. There's your guy there, D Kit Sionvaki. I, 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 I'm I'm not I'm not ready to go there just yet, but it might happen. It might happen. What, what do you yeah, guys I was just think? gonna ask that. I was just gonna yeah. ask uh, who's the better no. player. Uh, uh, Vaki, he closes quickly. He, the, he got so, that so, so, so the the better player probably is Vaki. I mean, he, he can do more, but Cole just be around the football, bro. He just finds his way. No, Vaki is around the football too. That boy was around the football a lot. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so what, what number is he for Utah? Or what number was he for Utah? Uh, Vaki was, was twenty eight, I think. Yeah, twenty. Might have been twenty eight. Nah, nah, I, I I ain't seen enough for twenty eight, bro. I saw eight. Yeah, eight, eight. eight. Ocho, bro. <laughs> Listen, man. Feel me? Last season, maybe this season, twenty-eight. No. Mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think Rocky is certainly closed the gap. Right. He's he's closed the gap, right. bro. And and then and, the, and the the way he can help your team in more ways, right? You know, he, right. he, can, he can make plays with the football, and I, I so I can understand why people would be higher on Vaki, but just as a safety. I'm not ready to go there just yet. I, I got I, I got think, more work to do. I got more I think work to Bucky, do. Uh, I think his pass game instincts can improve. I think Bishop has a little more instincts in the pass game. Uh, but he triggered Bucky, man. He triggers okay. downhill. He gets to the ball carry. He's an aggressive tackler. A lot of tackles for loss. Uh, you kind of want him kind of freed up his space, you know, because he, he can get engulfed. <laughs> but you want him to have him in space, running sideline to sideline, read and react. Uh, sometimes he's another safety that gets a little too aggressive at times. But uh, he's an excellent run and chase player, man. He's gonna run, he's gonna chase, he's gonna get you, and I think he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be faster than Bishop also. So I think I think Baki goes ahead of Bishop uh, in the but, draft. Listen, Baki probably listen. has he has more room to grow, I would imagine, right? Listen, if, if yeah, he's a two way player. Plays yeah, running back. The also. comments, the comments is yeah. like, yo, we tripping. Baki's no, no, nah, nah, I'm I'm with the comments now. After after watching, I'm not. I, I, I'm I was big on Bishop last season, nah, nah. but this season. I think Baki was the guy over there uh, yeah. over Bishop we'll this season. <laughs> Last season nah. it was called Bishop. Nah. <laughs> I, I watched I watch the tape. I'll come back to the front of the congregation. I, I'll give you my thoughts. Yeah, t- check the tape out, man. <laughs> check the tape out. All he right. was impressive. All right. So so if you, Vaki, Vaki here is a new entry into the top 100, and, and he's trending up. He's trending up. Zach Frazier mm-hmm. climbs a bit here. I think Eichenberg may have slid down a couple of spots. No, uh, no. Like I, Eichenberg. He, 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 Oh yeah. Or did I move him up? Did I move him up? No, no, you did. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a few spots. He was at 79 previously. Um, a lot of good players here. A lot of good players. Christian Haynes, Zach Frazier, Makai Wingo, Root, Jacob Cowan. I think he's gonna put on a show. We talk about guys creating separation. He's gonna do that. Right. And that and that's why he's gonna have success. Wherever he lands, that's why he's gonna have success at the NFL level. I think he's gonna put on a show in Mobile, particularly in those one-on-ones. All right. And as we continue to Make our I want to talk through. a little bit about um my bad. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna throw it off right now. Who's that? Uh, Zach Frazier. All right, go ahead. Uh, the interior office alignment for West Virginia. This guy's a four-time state wrestler, and it shows in this game, man. The 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 angles that he uses, the leverage that he uses, the awareness. He's he, he's a very he's not the strongest. He's not the fastest. He's just nasty. Uh, four-year starter. He could play. I think he's versatile in gas or his own scheme. <laughs> play to the whistle. He has that that bully demeanor. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, boy. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, no, yeah, Zach Frazier's impressive, man. I think I'm, I'm moving him up my board. I, I know people love the Cooper BB, uh, Zach Zinter, but I think he, he might be ahead of those guys, man. I, I really like what I saw from Zach Frazier. I like his game. So let me ask you a question. So, since, 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 you, since you're throwing Frazier's name around, with Zinter and BB, do you, do you think Frazier's a, a guard at the next level? Yeah, I or think he played guard. Okay. I think he played okay. guard uh, or center. I think any way, left guard, center, right guard, anywhere on the interior, I think okay. he'd be just fine right that, there. That, that's, that's what I needed to understand. Yeah, that's high IQ to player too. He, he's a very high yeah. IQ player also. I All like right. him a lot. All right. D-Kit's on board with you there, Henley, on Zach Frazier. All right. Uh, that takes us to 89 through 96. Uh, Ricky Persaw, Drew's guy, Drew's Bucky guy. Irvin climbing here. Mike Sanders still here. Here's the climb. We're we got to move up. Here. Yeah, no, he, 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 he's, he's already moved up. He's yeah. going to continue yeah. to move up. I, yeah. I, I yeah. suspect 
He will continue to move up. Uh, Gabriel Murphy, Michael Pratt is a new entry. Uh, Blake Corm, I, I mentioned Bucky Irvin moving up a bit here. Kalen Bullock, uh, Blake Fisher, Brendan Rice, Jalen Wright, Grayson Murphy rounds out the top 100. Uh, Jalen Wright, running back from Tennessee, also a new entry into the top 100. So that that is the top 100, but but we have an additional 25 prospects uh, that that we're we're sorting through, right? Cedric Gray actually was originally in the top 100, but he, he slides a little bit just outside. Aud Audric Estime, James Williams, spelled that name wrong. Uh, Javon Foster, Tyron Hopper, Kate Stover. You got to pronounce the last name for it. For me, Headley. Pronounce the last name for me. Um, I, I butchered it last time. Is it, is it Lua Fowl? Lua Lua Fowl? Fowl? The, 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 the so, chat knows, man. Give me, yeah, give me, give me a, <laughs> yeah, give, give me a phonetic. Lufu. Is it Lufu? No, is it Lufu? I, I, just, I just threw that out there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, some... DJ James, quarterback from Auburn. Auburn's like entire secondary, I think, is yeah. this particular draft. Uh, followed by Spencer Rattler, a, a player that, you know, is, is very intriguing. Rattler's talent, yeah. arm talent, there's no question about it. I think the main concern is the decision making. You know what I'm saying? Seeing the field on a consistent basis. But I think. You get him in in the appropriate offense with with, with some good coaching. Uh, you may be able to harness that talent. So that, that that's a, one of the more intriguing names at the quarterback position. After you get past Penix, Nix, McCarthy, once you get past that trio, Rattler really becomes the most intriguing name to me. I know we have Michael Pratt rated a little bit higher, but but Rattler's talent is is special I, as far as being able to spin the football. Mm -hmm. He's as good as anybody in the class in terms of spinning yeah. the football. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd. Running back out of USC, Dwayne Carter, Trey Benson, Tyke Smith, Jamari Tr Thrash, McKinley Jackson, Kamal Hayden. Uh, that's 113 through 116. Brayden Fisk, Puny, Roman Wilson, JV and Cohen. He's a transfer from Alabama. Played at Miami this past season. Cam Hart, Jalen Ford, Jalen Simpson, Muhammad Kamara, and finally Drew's guy, Keith Randolph Jr. So I went through that very quickly. I, I went through that very quick. So, so go ahead, Drew. Go ahead. Real quick, just uh, Matthew. Uh, Kyrie Jackson is one twenty six. Man, that's that's all I wanted to say. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say. This is what I wanted to say. He is underrated, by the way. Can't He's nice. Yeah. There you have it. There you have it. So, so among among one hundred one through one twenty five. All right, uh, Headley. We talked about James Williams. We, we talked about James Williams and and, and kind of what we. Would like to see what we expect from him. Uh, very intriguing prospect. You can't teach that size, obviously, and that athleticism. Who, who stands out to you among this group, Adley? Uh, I'm looking at the linebackers, man. I uh, really like uh, Tyron Hopper from uh, Missouri. He, he's always around the football. And uh, the Notre Dame linebacker, Maurice Lufu, uh, I, he's a twitchy linebacker. Compared to, they got another guy, J.C. Bertrand. Bert, Bertrand, uh, Bertrand is, you know, more – in the box, uh, physical linebacker, but Lufu is twitchy. They could send him on the blitz. Uh, he goes sideline to sideline. He, he got that 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 nature, that hunting nature. Also, his movement ability. Uh, I like him attacking, moving forward. Uh, when he has to read and react, I think that's where he's a, a, a little bit delayed. But uh, he, he's this 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 age is linebacker. You know, the NFL they, they want linebackers that can run sideline to sideline. I help you in pass coverage, and I think he does that that really well. So I like those two linebackers right there. All right. What about you, Drew? Uh, I, got, I got two guys here. I got Cade Stover, <clears throat> tight end for Ohio State. He just kind of he just he's dude's kind of sneaky, man. Um, I, I think his his best football is definitely ahead of him in terms of um, catching the football and just being a little bit more dynamic. Um, I, I think he has that in him, but I don't necessarily think Ohio State used him in that way. Tight end is usually not a a, a big target for them in that offense that they run with the receivers that they got. And then the other guy was um, – scroll down real quick. I know his last name. for oh, Dwayne Carter from Duke, oh, yeah. uh, deep yeah. tackle, uh, causes havoc all over the place. I think he was used all over that line, but mainly in the middle. But um, he, he, I know I, I like to like to use the term line of scrimmage discriminator. I, I think he's also a penetrator as well. Mm. So – yeah, pause. discriminate, penetrate, all that. Pause, pause it up. I, I kind of want to jump into some of these running backs too, because yeah. uh, you know, you know bro, bro, don't, no, don't nobody want to hear about no Trey Benson, bro. Yeah, I don't, don't want to hear about it either. I don't <laughs> want to talk about some Trey Benson. I don't want to hear about it either. <laughs> not, 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 not just Trey Benson. Um, 
also a guy that I think he just made the top 100, uh, Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Yes. Like, he's impressive, yes. man. He might be the, probably one of the most twitchiest running backs in this class. Uh, just as he could go laterally and not lose any speed and accelerate so quickly. Uh, I know he's not going to be like a, a bell cow running back, but put him in a committee, give him like 10 Let's to 15 somebody. touches a game, and he could be very effective. Uh, Trey Benson, I seen, uh, I think it was your boy, um, uh, what's your boy, DP. I think DP had Benson as, as his RB1, running back one in this class. Um, the thing about him, is, is, I think he does. I think he has uh, Trey Benson as running back one. I got to go check the tape, but. He, the first and second downs, he, he, you know, how he comes downhill, he's hard to bring down. Just the pass catching. You know, the league likes their pass catching running backs. And, and Jalen Wright can help you there as well. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd is another running back for USC to help you in the passing game as well. So it's, it's a lot of good running backs. It's just they're not being talked about because we just know the nature of the position right now. Uh, SMA, physical running back going downhill for Notre Dame. That's another one there also. So. You know, those are those are some of the running backs. I just I just want to speak speak to the running backs a little bit. Would you say Wright is, is similar to Rashad White? I haven't watched him, so I'm not sure. Would you say he's similar to Rashad White? Oh, oh, there, there's a yeah. conversation that I want to yeah, have I like with y'all. I want to have a conversation with y'all about a pair of, of former senior bowl running backs that we had a conversation about previously. So a lot mm-hmm. of conversations going on. Feel me? Uh <laughs> let me address, let me address uh draft day one on one. There is a high for Jalen Wright. There, oh, yeah. There's absolutely a high for Jenna Wright. So, so you're going to hear his name more and more throughout the pre-draft process. I'm, I'm certain of that. He DJ, made for the NFL. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Trey Benson is not running back one. <laughs> absolutely right. All right. Don't That's good hey, for no, 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 no. I, I, cool. I, 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 think, I think the thing about Benson is that he's scheme specific. He's scheme specific in my oh. eyes. That, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. But in that zone, he could be a problem. He could be a real mm-hmm. problem in that Put zone. In the ground. Yeah, man physicality there you know what i'm saying but it's a scheme specific issue that i have with with benson that's that's the reason why i can't consider him the top back in the class um, yeah these running backs are bunched up they're all bunched yes, up yes very much so it, it's a pick your flavor not unlike the receivers not, not unlike yeah. the receivers after the top three or so bucky irvin is a guy i know dp was really high on he i yeah, think i'm not mistaken dp mentioned bucky irvin kind of being the ty j spears of this particular class Right, he, mm-hmm. he kind of views him in a, in a similar similar light. I listen, man. I can't quit Braylon Allen, man. I can't do it. And I'm I am thoroughly impressed with Jonathan Brooks. I'm a little surprised he's coming out considering the injury, but I'm thoroughly impressed with what I saw from him. Yeah, I think I think Brooks RB one. I think Jonathan yeah. Brooks is the RB one. Just the yeah, versatility, pass, agree. run game, downhill. Yeah, yeah. He could be a bell yeah. cow. He can cast the football. Absolutely. He can do everything. He can Absolutely. do everything. Um, <clears throat> we we had a disagreement some time ago. Regarding Rashad White and oh Jerome God. Ford, and Jerome Ford, I like y'all Ford said too. I was crazy. Y'all said I was crazy to put Jerome Ford in the same category as Rashad White. Am He's I not still crazy? Category. No, you're Am still I crazy. still crazy? Come yeah. on, bro. Rashad White is bro. Rashad White when he does in the passing game, bro. Bro, they not bro, the same category. You, 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 you clearly not watching the Browns play, bro. You clearly <laughs> not watching the Browns play, I, bro. I've seen Jerome Ford. But you know what? You, you're talking about backup. the passing game. You're talking about the passing game, bro. bro yeah, you you did ball. not see what Jerome Ford did in the passing game this year? But he's not running routes, though, like Rashad White. Rashad White's running routes. And he's making Come people on, miss, bro. bro. And he's making people miss. And, and, and Ford ain't doing none of that. He ain't doing none of that. I like Jerome Ford. Remember, Drew's the one that didn't like Jerome Ford. I like Jerome Ford with you. I was. I was, Remember, bro. I like Jerome Ford with you. But I, I, I wouldn't I, compare him to Rashad White, though. That's just me. I, I said four got four four got a nose for the end zone. I would give him that, and that's about all I gave him. That's all. That's the box that I gave him the check for, bro. No, they I, they call you cuckoo, bro. Philip hey, say you cuckoo. I, I don't care what they say, <laughs> <laughs> bro. But get, Jerome Ford's gonna go back to a backup running back once once Nick Chubb come back, right? And, and Rashad White would be riding that pond if he was playing behind Nick Chubb, bro. What are we talking about? You'll see about? a lot more time. You'll see a lot more time in that passing game. Stop it, bro. Ain't nobody seeing no time other than Kareem Hunt behind Nick Chubb. <laughs> no, no, on, see, 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 no, 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 no. See, see, the thing about Rashad White in space, bro, he's special, bro. Mm, special. He's special. In the I'm not saying game you, can't, too. you can't say that about Ford, bro. You can't, bro. You, you can Ford say he's good. Ford in the passing game like Rashad White, bro. Yeah, bro. Ford, Ford might be a better Runner. runner, yeah, he's a better yeah. runner. I'll give him that. Better runner. I'll give him that. He, 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 he checked runner. the box on that this year. I'll give him he that. Is he might. He is a better runner than Rashad White. He is. He is. Stop it. 
and I like Rashad White. I, I hate I hate to make it sound like yeah, I, I don't like Jerome Ford, and I like Jerome Ford. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I, I like I think they're too. the same conversation, man. That's how I feel about it. They, they say I know, I know, they, I know I'm I'm in the I'm in the minority on that one, but I right. I, I feel strongly about it. Get that. to the back of the bus, bro. Minority. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They say, Bucks, they say you a homer, Drew. You can say you a homer. I, I, I see what I see, bro. You feel me? I see what I see. Yaya Diaby balling. Can't see I balling. I like Yaya. Can't yeah, see the balling. Yeah, you got senior some ball, out senior there. ball, right? Was can't see a senior ball? I forgot. Is he there? He? I don't remember. I don't remember no, 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 no. Yeah, that was him. He's on the classroom. He's on the classroom. on the classroom. So yeah, yeah. Can't see's a bad boy. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to bring our update to our top now 125 you seen this? You seen this to part? a conclusion. 